Assalamu alaikum dear friends, this is Manzoor and welcome to our another conversation. And as far as today's guest is concerned, uh, today's guest is my very dear friend. Uh, he's uh, Nasir Ahmad Khan. He's assistant professor in the Department of Higher Education. Uh, he's currently teaching English literature to the students of uh, Government Degree College, Pandipura. So welcome Nasir to our conversations. Uh, thank you very much, my dear friend. Uh, pleasure for me, uh, really, to be the part of this conversation. I hope this conversation will be very productive and uh, fruitful for the students. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, since uh, we have been doing these conversations, uh, our aim and objective is to inspire people, to help people understand different careers and uh, many other things. Uh, so today, we have a sort of different sort of conversation. We'll be talking about literature. Uh, and, uh, and my guest okay. is well versed in his own subject. Uh, he has inspired many, uh, especially student community. So Dr. Nasir, let us begin with the first uh, question. For example, in uh, contemporary times, uh, uh, help us understand what literature is first, and then we'll begin other, what literature is. Okay, this is uh, a very fundamental question and uh, uh, the last question. I think, uh, I connect literature with life. My experience with literature is that literature is exploration of life through texts. So the textual interpretation of life, I mean, uh, whatever has been written uh, in different literary texts, uh, that has helped us in understanding different facets of life. That probably might have been the reason uh, when William Raman said, that uh, Raymond Williams said that, well, literature matters because life matters. So he too was connecting it with life. So I also feel that literature is the reflection of life through these texts. And uh, literature is uh, not only uh, about uh, reality, it's also about imagination. So when you explore this, when you explore uh, life through imagination, when you explore through life, uh, through language and creative use of language, you are basically using literature and you are taking creative literature. Otherwise, anything which is written uh, becomes literature and is a part of literature. But I'm specifically talking about uh, a literature, which is um, uh, literary, liter literary texts. I'm talking about literary texts. And uh, in that way, I'm defining literature. Otherwise, whatever is said or written, that forms a part of literature. Okay, so uh, so we'll this takes us to the another question. For example, we are living in a times uh, where uh, where we are planning, where the nations are planning to go to the Mars and the Moon and other uh, heavenly bodies, and this is uh, in fact the times of technology and internet. I mean, uh, how can we explain someone who is not in this realm of literature? How can we explain to those people who are completely, who are in a completely different space that how important, uh, and if at all it is, how important is this literature is? Okay, for that, uh, uh, I feel that literature's relevance, it, it is basically a question which is connected with the uh, relevance of literature in contemporary times. Given the speed that we have gained in science and technology, the way we are making progress there, and uh, how much relevant it is for a common man. I, I, I hope that this is what you want to know. And how can we explain it to the people? I've already told you that literature since is connected with life. And life is not all about, uh, you know, about the physical objects. Life is basically about uh, how we adapt ourselves and how we live in this world and how we are able to create. Literature is basically uh, connects us with imagination. And I, I, I am uh, those who don't know, or those who are not well versed with literature might be knowing that literature helps in development of Im imagination. And literature helps us in adapting to the, to the, to the world in a better, in a human way. I mean, in the, in, the, in the modern world, we have facing problems, we have crisis, we have value, value system is collapsing. The world is heading towards a catastrophe. Uh, 
albeit all this unprecedented growth in science and technology. So in order to create that balance, the common man needs to understand that uh, there's some centrality which uh, will hold things together, which will keep the balance in this world. And for that, um, he needs to read literature, one. Second, in literature doesn't only help us in understanding life uh, uh, as, as, a, as a part, but it helps us in understanding life as a whole, as a complex phenomenon. So you cannot be loop sided you cannot be one-sided when it comes uh, uh, when, when it comes how you will better make yourself as a productive human being. So for becoming that productive human being, I'm, I'm sure that literature is a way. Literature will provide you answers to many of the questions it has pro provided in the, in the past and it will help us in the future also in solving many of the problems which are still there. And, uh, and, and it is, as I have already said, you, it is connected with languages. Literature is connected with languages. Literature keeps your identity going. It gives you that feeling. So I think uh, without literature, you'll be ha having a huge, I mean, if you are, if you are uh, making any, uh, I mean, any attempts to deflate literature or to ignore literature, you'll become just a machine. You'll be without any uh, human angle. So when you are without any human angle, without any humanity or human concerns, without empirical questions, what's right and wrong, I think you just become like a beast. So that's uh, how we need to tell to the world that literature is very important because it will keep that thing. Okay, so uh, this takes us to the another question. Since Nasir Saab, since you, you are yourself a, a writer, you have written hundreds of articles and all, in fact, you are also a poet. Tell us, you, if you can tell us uh, that how can literature help us to, to become in a way writers? And uh, if you could also have a message for uh, uh, upcoming writers. Okay, this is also a very good question. Uh, Basically, all creative writing uh, is stimulated and, and further consolidated. If you have that writing skills, you will be able to consolidate on them and you will be able to make them better by, you know, by, under, by going through a lot of literary texts because uh, you get some masterpieces, you get some touchstones, you get some methods through which you will pass, so some litmus tests through which you will pass your write, own writings. And on the basis of that, you'll become your own uh, you know, critics and uh, you'll pass on judgments, uh, whether you are on the right track as a writer or not. Uh, and as already I have told you that literature is basically the creative use of language. So the creative use of language, uh, you, you oh, Yes, please. Uh, so I have told already told you that literature is a creative uh, use of language. So you and, and the best use of language. I mean, you find the best use of language is made by the writers, by the authors. When you read some great writer, you become your own judge that where you are heading towards. So you cannot become a perfect or a good writer unless and until you are well read and you have not gone through those great literary masters who have produced uh, lit that literature which has which is living literature and uh, which has passed the tests of time. So uh, my message to the new writers would be that they must not write in isolation. They must connect their own literature with a vast tradition which uh, is already there available uh, for us because we cannot uh, cut, cut off ourselves from that great tradition. From, I mean, from the great legacy that we have inherited. Um, because a lot of literature has been written and a lot of literature will be written in the future also. So uh, that writing is always helped by the amount of reading that you have. So that's, that's uh, how uh, literature also helps writing and how literature gives you various dimensions. And moreover, literature makes you very brave because writer has to be very brave. Writer has to be very autonomous. Writer has to be very independent. So if you want to gain these things, you, you will learn and you will see how certain people like uh, uh, who have, who have uh, been through some turmoil or some 
uh, some times when the times were not favorable to them, how they have uh, adjusted themselves as writers, how they have written so that, that timidity and that cowardice, which might be there in a writer, or the tendency to follow a streamlined thought, uh, uh, mainstream thought, sorry, that uh, in order to overcome that, you need to read a lot of literature. And that will make you very brave and that will give you that much of the courage which is needed to be the writer. So that's my message to the young generation of writers. That so coming, uh, com yes, coming to the conclusion of this conversation, if you can help us understand uh, as far as if someone, for example, writes in a foreign language, uh, for example, if someone, uh, if someone tries to write in English language or any foreign language, how difficult it is for someone who is not a native speaker of the language to actually speak and uh, in fact write in that language? Yes, the two is a very good question. Most of the people prefer to write their, in their own mother languages or the languages which reach to the masses. But when you are basically a writer, you're not writing for the popular masses. You're writing for a very selective audience. You're writing for a selective uh, group of people. And they are those people who are already well versed with that language. So uh, whenever writing has taken place, writing has taken place for that, 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 that specific target, that specific uh, uh, you know, group of uh, people. So one thing. Second thing uh, we have we have available in modern times. Uh, there's a lot of scope for translations also. So if your work is of that merit, it could be translated in any languages. So I don't think that uh, um, that that the greatness of your work will be marred by the language that you are writing. Even if you can be a great writer by writing Kashmiri in Kashmiri your own uh, mother tongue, and that can be later on translated. So I, I don't think that uh, one should be having seen any you know, moral, uh, facing any sort of moral dilemma, what to choose when it comes to the selection of language. Because basically all languages are expressions and all languages are adequately expressing the human emotions and human feelings and their experiences. So Kashmiri is, is as good as English when it comes to expression of your emotions or expression of your own experience or for writings. So for that matter, I don't think that language should be as such any sort of uh, a bar when it comes to writing. Okay, so I believe we, we, uh, we are at the conclusion of this uh, conversation. I thank you for taking time and talking to us about literature and writing. And if you have any kind of message for our students uh, as far as your experience in higher education and about literature and writing, you can have that. Um, I'm, first of all, I must thank you. As, uh, it's a very good initiative that you have taken just to give some sort of confidence and a level of encouragement to our students as well as some sort of a guidance. I, I hope that by our students are lacking in many ways that kind of guidance. Otherwise, they are capable of moving forward and pressing forward themselves and finding a pace with the modern world. But unfortunately, the exposure is missing and you have created a wonderful initiative and by you know bringing different people who are very successful in their own fields. So I can't count myself one of the mediocre persons as such, but uh, sharing my experiences with my students would be that they please go through. Literature is one of the vast areas and vast arenas wherein there's a lot of scope for them internationally as well as nationally. So they must go for it and uh, they must read a lot and uh, what I have observed that we are cutting ourselves uh, off. We are sieving our relationships with the books. We have made almost severe relationships with the books. I hardly find students reading books nowadays, reading texts nowadays. So if they want to get uh, develop that taste in them, please go through some great writers, some great literary writers, because literature is also entertainment. I, I couldn't you know, elaborate with completely the scope and definition of literature. Uh, literature is basically an entertainment. So that uh, entertainment, uh, if that they are missing in reading, they start it with some literary writers, and that will develop them in reading some in, in reading some other books, which are say metaphysical or which are social or which are just some other sort of a discourse. So uh, I'm sure that they will take this platform and they will use all, all opportunity to explore their talents. So thank you. Thank you once again for joining me here uh, on this conversation. Thank uh, Thanks thank a lot. And hope that, uh, I hope that we'll join in some other segments sometime again. 
and uh, okay. again we uh, were anticipating that you might be bringing some more uh, conversation and some more people through this platform and it will really help the student generations thank you uh, thank you thanks thanks for uh, this great gesture thank you thank you that's right